Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 16th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. In case you missed the RSA keynote panel today with Ed, Mike Allen and myself, there is a summary on the Sands website with what we talked about. Also, RSA will have a follow-up webcast within about a month, the exact date hasn't been set yet we got i think uh, far over 100 questions so only got through a couple of them and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of the remaining questions during that follow-on webcast but with that xavier also had a great diary today with preferred network lists that's a problem that you have in a lot of wireless clients where they remember the last few few Wi-Fi networks they connected to and then try to reconnect to them when they come online. Now, if you sniff for that, and that's what Xavier goes through here, you will be able to enumerate the SSIDs they're trying to connect to. And then with public services, you'll be able to geolocate them. Of course, once the client connects to your Wi-Fi network, you may get additional information, particular iOS and OS 10 devices always sort of advertise the device name which is usually or at least the default configuration the name of the owner of the device so by combining those two data sets you essentially know who the owner is of the device and can then check what prior networks that owner connected to and that's essentially what Xavier is talking about here not really a new problem these preferred network lists are fairly well known but Xavier sort of walks you through the process of actually collecting that information and Bitdefender is reporting about a new Mac malware. They're calling it X agent and associate it with apt28 which is commonly linked to russia this particular mac malware does not have its own infection vector so it's something the user will probably install or that will be installed using some vulnerability on the system once installed on the system the malware does have some anti debugging or reversing features for example if it is be attached to a debugger it will not run and secondly it will then wait for an internet connection once the internet connection is established it will start to exfiltrate data using domains that contain the word apple so this way it tries to blend in with some of the normal apple traffic that you're seeing on os 10 systems one interesting thing in addition to passwords screenshots and the like this particular malware will also try to exfiltrate iOS backups. So if the infected system was used to backup iOS devices, then you may lose that data as well. Not clear if it will help you here if the password if the backups are password protected, but given that it's running on the system itself, it may actually be able to extract some of these passwords as well, in particular if the user is logged in. And security company Contextus looked into Android-based conference phones and found that products by Mitel had some interesting vulnerabilities. The root cause of these vulnerabilities was that it looked like much of the software was sort of in a development and debug state. Some of the certificates used to sign components of the software were publicly available test certificates, not actual private certificates and keys being established by Mitel for production software as you should have done it. Now, because of uh, this problem, Contextus was then able to overwrite the firmware on the device with firmware presented by a DHCP server. That's a feature that you have very commonly in voice over IP devices where DHCP can advertise configuration files or firmware files. Of course, they should be validated on the device using certificates and digital signatures but given that this device used this publicly available debug certificate it was pretty easy to actually fake a copy of the firmware and have it being accepted as genuine 
As a quick fix, uh, one thing you can do is essentially don't allow the phone to be updated using a DHCP. However, the real fix, of course, has to be a better firmware that does properly validate uh, these updates so they can't be spoofed as easily as in this example. Because an attacker needs to be able to actually set up their own DHCP server in order for the attack to work. This is not trivially exploitable remotely. An attacker already he has to have a foothold in the network off the device. Uh, there is no patch at this point by Mitel. They published an advisory and essentially recommend uh, to disable these DHCP features.